Okay guys, we've got the monitor out of the cabinet temporarily and uh, we've laid it on its back here and that'll give us real good access to all parts of the cab really if there's anything we need to do but uh, right now most of it is just about done um, well I say just about done, there's still a lot of work to do but uh, a lot of this uh, bracing it up and uh, putting in parts, you know, cross pieces, cross members and stuff the platform for the monitor and all most of that's done, uh, probably the major big things would be like the front panel here, which I have a wood uh, piece in the next room that's going to go for the front panel. And I think I'm going to have to go purchase panels for the back. Uh, I was going to use that panel on the back, but I'm not sure. I might just use it for some bracing because um, I thought the cutout in the middle could be used to install an exhaust fan. Um, the way we put the front in on this one, when we put it in here, uh, if you notice like right there the way these kind of cleats or whatever are installed there once I put my front panel in there's actually going to be about an inch slot of openness all the way across here and uh, it wasn't exactly by design but I'm kind of glad it worked out that way because I want to leave it open and allow it to kind of suck some air from the front of the cab kind of like a computer case does a lot of computer cases have an opening in the front and sometimes they have a fan installed in the front on the lower part of the case and it draws air up through those uh, slots. If you was to take a tower computer and just kind of lean it back and look under the front, usually there's an open slot there where it can draw some air in. And they're changing cases now, so cases are designed a little bit differently, but that's the way they've been for a long time. And uh, if I install a fan in the back of this system, or maybe a couple of fans as kind of exhaust fans, it can pull some cool air through the front of this, circulate it through like the uh, monitor chassis and the uh, computer circuit boards, hard drive, and stuff like that, and kind of keep the system a little bit cool so too much heat doesn't build up in there. Um, around the monitor area, it's probably going to be more heat than anywhere, and, and maybe around the power supply area. But uh, it's good to have a little bit of ventilation, so that's probably the way that's going to work out. But most likely for the back, I'm probably going to get some, uh, I'd say, either half inch or three quarter inch, uh, either plywood or MDF or something, and uh, install it. So I'll probably go get one big sheet, uh, 4x8 sheet or uh, two 4x4 four four sheets and uh, make a two-piece back like on some of the cabinets where the upper part doesn't remove it's just you know installed permanently and then uh, when you come down to about halfway down the back of the monitor you have a panel that you can remove like a, a big door or a removable panel so that's probably the way we're going to go with that but uh, right now we're going to get to marking off our corners here we're going to install the front casters, one right there and the other one right there, and then the back casters in the back two corners. And uh, in the back corners, we're going to use uh, kind of stationary position casters, and uh, they just roll. They don't have any kind of directional movement to them. And uh, let me show you the front casters. Here's a front caster, and they swivel. So you'll be able to kind of control it if you want to move the cabinet around and on. And once it's on carpet, there's enough weight to this that it's not going to move around too much if you're, you know, pressing around on the joysticks or two people are playing and kind of getting into it. It really shouldn't move all that much, but it's going to be easy enough to push around that it's not going to be like just, you know, dragging it around or trying to rock it out and back to get it in place. You'll be able to kind of pull it around, put it where you want. So we're going to get to marking these and the base plate on them. I think they're a little different. Yeah, this is more of a square base plate on this. It's not a perfect square. Let's see. It's a little bit of a rectangle there. So right now, if you're looking at the holes, the upper left and right is farther apart than the uh, the left, upper, and lower holes there. See, it's like a little taller. And uh, the base plate on the back one it doesn't match up so it's a different it's a different hole pattern it's a little bit skinnier Let's see if I can hold them on top of each other there where you can see if you take a look you can kinda of see that the back casters there they're not as wide as far as the base plate where you mount it so we can't just use one like pattern or whatever for the screw holes we're just gonna to have to hold them up and and just mark us off some uh, holes where we're going to drill through with a pencil and then just come back with a uh, drill bit and start us a pilot hole and uh, I'm going to make it pretty small pilot hole and uh, pre-drill 
and then come back with the screws but we want it to get a really good bite in the wood because there's a lot of weight going on these wheels we don't want these wheels you know buckling and and cracking loose on the bottom so those screws are going to be put in really good and tight so I'll come back in just a second and show you some of that process okay guys first thing we're going to do is uh, come back and mark us a position that is at least three quarters inch back from the edge of the back because we know we may install a three quarters inch or less panel in the back and I don't want these screws to interfere in case we put you know kind of a piece of trim around there or something at least I don't want the uh, the tops of the screws if they poke out at all I don't want them interfering with that back panel going in so I'm going to come up at, at least three quarters of an inch I might just go ahead and make it a full inch so we'll just measure that with this little ruler here put us a little mark right quick and it's on carpet right now so it may not be dead perfect but it's close enough Got us a mark there, and make sure that I'm kind of consistent across the back of the cabinet. Let's see, I'm gonna fit it there that way. Let's see if I can just put my framing square up here, line it up with that mark. Put that little line there, little line there, and flip my framing square around, transfer it. Transfer it over the other side, so we're about the same area over here as we are over here. And we'll just measure just just to make sure it's pretty close. And yeah, it's about one inch. And that's just where we're going to put, just going to put the uh, edge of our caster kind of on that line. And I'm going to go ahead and butt it all the way up to the side of the cabinet here. I think that'll work. Let's see. It will work. It'll be less noticeable if I move it in some. So I'm not sure here. Let's see. Put these wheels on the front. They're not going to have room to move unless we put them in, recess them a little ways. Won't have room for those to clear all the way around. And again, I don't know if you guys can see on the camera. Let me turn my screen around where I can look at it. Yeah, it's a little bit above your view right now. But uh, let me move the camera slightly and show you what I'm talking about. Right up here, I want to install this so that this can move around 360 degrees without hitting anything. If I put it too close to the edge, of course, it's going to bump and hit and everything. We don't want that. We'll move it back away so it can rotate freely. If you notice right here, the way these cleats were on there and the way I cut this cabinet, that was already on there in the beginning. It had kind of like a little toe panel or kick panel up under there. And when I cut it, I just kind of left that. Well, it's actually good now because now the wheels, it's almost like it's going to be kind of designed so the wheels can rotate and, you know, actually be mounted slightly closer to the sides and, and still miss miss the side of the cabinet. You just want to give yourself plenty of clearance there. Let's see. Let's see how far back we can come. We'd like to have these wheels aligned if possible. Missing it by pretty good much there. come in about, I'd say about an inch and a quarter from the side. 
about an inch and a quarter from the side for these. These are going to be able to rotate freely. And then to center these up, we're going to have to look at what the difference is here. So about an inch and a quarter from the side for these. And if we take a look, what we're going to do is look at the difference in the width of the bases on these, just to keep the wheels kind of perfectly in line with each other. Difference in the width of the bases is about half an inch. So we add about a quarter to that, so about an inch and a quarter, about an inch and a half. So on the back wheels, if we come in about an inch and a half from the side, then we'll stay lined up with the front wheels. So let me double check that right quick. and a half on the bottoms. Let me re-aim the camera again. So we're going to come in an inch and a half from the sides here for the bottoms. So we'll make us a mark at an inch and a half. don't have to be this perfect but I don't know I mean it's not that difficult so I don't know why you can't take the extra time to do it so we basically just made a mark that's going to be the corner one inch up from from the bottom and then we're an inch and a half from the side of this and that's going to put it perfectly in line with the top caster if it's over an inch and a quarter since it has a larger base. So we're going to go ahead and mark, see if we can mark for the, see if I can get in a position where I can see what I'm doing here. And it's also going to help if we mark an inch and a quarter over here so we don't get the we don't want the wheel to be turned like that, or turned like that. We want it to be pretty much square with the, the corner. So, go ahead and mark an inch and a half. About right there.
make an outline of the holes, trying to. A little bit more difficult on the bottom. Okay, we got three of them marked. I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is just go ahead and drill three of them and uh, start to put it in place. And if it's going to move around any at all, then I'll drill the last one afterwards. And uh, it's just a little hard to transfer it that close to the carpet. change to a little larger drill bit. But here's the screws we're going to be using. They're one inch screws. And it'll go up into the opening on that uh, base of the caster and see pretty flush. So we're going to go ahead and get us a drill bit here that's a bit smaller than the shaft of the screw. We just want to keep the wood from splitting but we want it to have a good good tight connection. Yeah I think this one will do good. We're using a 3 30 seconds bit. doesn't really matter as long as it's no bigger than the shaft of the screw without the threads. But I like to get mine a bit smaller, especially if I'm trying to make a really good tight connection. And the wood's only three quarters of an inch thick, so we don't need to go very deep. So what we're doing is we're just putting our bit as dead center in the hole that we outlined with the pencil as I can. And I uh, don't know if you guys can see, let me see if I can zoom in here. As you can see right there, I know the camera's not perfectly centered on it, but I've got the holes marked. And all we did was set this up there and just trace out the holes. And the last one is just a little hard to kind of get to the way I had it and it kept wobbling around. So I'm just going to go ahead and do three of them first. And then the last one, you know, once I get some screws hold it in place, I can do a lot easier. So, so anyways, here we go. We're just centering our drill bit in the middle of that hole as close as we can and trying to stay perpendicular with that piece of wood. Keep our drill bit as straight as possible. Okay, we're going to go ahead and change to the screwdriver bit. Immediately I see the problem that it's going to be hard to drive them in because of the caster being in the way. So what we're going to do is drive them in and pull them back out with the electric screwdriver. And then we'll have to use a hand screwdriver to put these in. That's just the only way we're going to get it. Because this head, this is too big. There's no way it's going to get, if you take a look here, there's no way I'm going to drive this screw into there. <laughs> the, the chuck is just going to get in the way. But to open the hole up just a little bit, I want to drive the screw in first into each hole. And you're probably going to press it. Try to change it a little bit. 
Okay, we only got one left. And uh, I may go ahead and try to outline it again since I got my holes drilled because it looks like it's going to be tough to do that last one unless I pre drill it. difficult to hold it. I'm not left-handed. I can't hardly. I'm gonna have to try to do it left-handed, I believe. I'm filming, bird. Can't you see? Okay. Actually worked out okay. I apologize if I'm a little slow tonight, guys. It's about it's about 12:30 midnight, but I wanted to get this done, have one more thing done in the cabinet because I've just been waiting too long to get these things done on this thing. Okay, I'm going to drive the last screw in just to kind of open the hole up. Okay guys, I'm going to try to put this in with a hand screwdriver. Sorry about the cut there, I had to get a screwdriver. Okay, we got one that's very long. Okay, this is about a foot long screwdriver, so yeah, it's going to give us good access to it. Still going to wind your hand off doing these most of the time. But it really helps to run the screw in first with the uh, electric screwdriver. And a lot of people do put these in with bolts put them in with some type of uh, nut and bolt or something but since this is going into plywood I figured these are pretty heavy wood screws I thought they'd work out good I'm a little short of driving them all the way home because I I wanted that last last quarter inch or so to be really hard to twist in so it hold good and tight. And it's good before you tighten any one corner down to get them all very close to being seated. If you tighten one down and you don't have your holes absolutely perfect, you're gonna have to loosen it back up to kind of wiggle the bracket around. Kind of loose, they're almost flush, but we got to give them a few more twists each one. And we'll have this one caster installed. I'm just going to look right quick and see if they're peeking out on the top. I believe they probably will just a little. Yeah, they're just they're just barely peeking out on top. And what I'll probably do is install a, a tiny piece of trim over the heads of these screws. Or I'll just take a uh, grinder or something and just grind them down just a little bit so there won't be any sharp edges on the top. And they're only going to stick through, I'd say, a sixteenth of an inch or so. camera guy. Uh. 
and they use a lot of torque. So a big screwdriver helps. I wish they had one with a, some type of T-handle or something. That would help. Or if I had a really long screwdriver bit, which you can get those a bit like what I've got in this drill here. And uh, they're like, you know, several inches long. You can get those, but I don't have one handy. Okay, looks like we're staying dead on our lines. The one that's showing we're an inch from the back. And the one that shows us we're an inch and a half from the side here. We're dead on it. Seating it down slowly because I don't I don't want it to be crooked. Okay, it's just about got it. I think that's pretty much it, guys. There it is. And that is very strong. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to cut here. We've been filming for about seven minutes since the last cut so it's probably 20 minutes of video just doing this one caster I'm going to do the other one it's identical and I won't show you a clip of it until it's done but I will show you the process of doing one of the uppers since they're a little bit different all right guys we got both of the rear casters on everything worked out pretty good but uh, we've got everything just on our marks it's an inch and a half from the side of the cabinet the uh, base is one inch from the back of the cabinet to give room for the back panel without anything impeding that up on the top of the the bottom of the cabinet. So everything's lined up real good on our marks. Now we're going to come up to the uh, upper left corner here and install one of the uh, pivoting casters. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and try to install our pivoting casters. We're going to do one up here in the upper left as the cabinet's sitting now. And uh, first thing we need to do, we had come over on the back casters one and a half inches, but the base on these casters, if you turn it like this, they're about two and a quarter inches, so they're about half an inch wider. Uh, the ones on the back are one and three quarter inch. Yeah, one and three quarter inch. So. Uh, to keep them lined up perfectly in line with the ones in the back, we're going to come off just an inch and a quarter instead of an inch and a half. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, let's see, somewhere around here, we'll come off, we'll come off about an inch and a quarter here. Make a little mark and we'll do it again up here. Okay, and uh, I'm trying to think of how far I want to come back from the front here. I don't think there's any reason that I can't go almost all the way to the edge, but we don't want to be dead on the edge, and we don't want the wood to split when we run the screws in. So we need to come back a little bit. I don't know. Maybe we'll keep it. Maybe we'll keep it an inch back. Let's see what it looks like if we put it an inch back. Let's see if we got it that far. I want to keep it on our line. And let's see. Come 
back. Maybe an inch. Let's see if it clears when it spins. It's almost, almost hitting. It's very close. You come up just a hair. That's at about the half inch mark. Let's see. Well, that's the half inch mark. See on the half inch mark how it does. It misses it by a decent amount. It's never going to bump it once you get it locked in. We might come back a half inch. Yeah, I think it'll be okay. Come back about a half inch. It's not going to miss it by much. It's only missing it by about a quarter inch, but that's all you need. So we'll put a mark here. We'll come back about about half an inch from the edge. Put us a mark here. Just double check our measurements there. And right there will be about where she'll mount. Yeah, it's going to miss by about a quarter of an inch as it rotates, so that'll be pretty good. This is going to be a little easier to mark since this is up kind of high and because. We can, we can hold it up in front of us and do like that, and if we've got to mark the back, you can actually swing the wheel out of your way. So these are a little easier to mark, so that's a good thing. Helps a lot. So we got it on our mark. Okay, those mark pretty good. Put our drill bit in. And on these two, we may be able to drive these screws in with the electric screwdriver the way those wheels tilt out of the way. I'm not quite sure yet. Let me turn the camera screen around to make sure I'm getting us on film here. Okay. We'll go ahead and pre-drill our holes. Let me reposition myself here.
Okay, that went a lot quicker. Let's see if we can actually put these in with the drill. We might be able to. We might have to seat it flush all the way down with the hand screwdriver, but I think we can get most of this in with the drill. Let me get four screws right quick. Rotate it up out of the way to get the bottom ones. Gotta get them started. About got it. I think we'll finish it with the hand screwdriver because we want to adjust it to get it as close to on our line as possible. much on our line. Everything looks good. Didn't splinter too much up top. Just got the, the heads of the screws poking through a little bit. Like I said, I think I'm just going to make some very small little trim pieces to kind of cover that up. Either that or I may take a grinder and just grind the tips off a little bit, but it'll be hard to grind that without kind of burning on the wood a little bit. But if I do that, I may come back and just paint that side black anyway. So. Let me show you close up real quick. Of course we got our backs. And there's one we just did. You can see our lines we made. We tried to stay as close on our line as possible. Pencil line there. I got a little bit to the edge of that pencil line right there just a hair but it stayed lined up almost perfectly and if you can see the way it's lined up it's almost perfectly in line with the one behind it that's what I was going for see how they line up now we just got one more to install and I'm going to do that off camera and I'll come back and show you okay guys I got all the casters on back ones and front ones Take a look. They're pretty much perfectly in line. 
Just did this one, and the front ones I got to say were much easier because you could rotate that wheel and get them out of your way and use the electric screwdriver for a lot of that. And it was just easier to mark too because you could get the wheel out of your way by rotating it. But you can see we stayed pretty much on our mark right here to the side. I might have been slightly off my pencil mark on the uh, right hand side, but it's no more than about a 64th of an inch. So <laughs> I like to be very close. But uh, like I said, if you take a look, our screws, the heads do poke through a little bit there. And I mean, you know, if you take a look at my finger, that, that's not very much at all. I can grind these down or I can put a piece of trim wood over it. And I may just do that. I think I have some very thin stock that I can take and just put a piece across here that's maybe maybe about three inches or so. I may have to go buy a piece, something like that. I don't want to put something too thick, I don't believe, but if you remember when we put this front on there, I had had some chipping because I used my circular saw and the blade didn't leave, you know, it, it, it wasn't a very fine blade and uh, the way I adjusted it too, it was just chipping out. Uh, there was a YouTube user told me I could put a piece of tape over that before I cut and it would help keep that from splintering and that was a good idea. But since it did splinter across here when I made that cut to put this new bottom in a long time ago, um, I was thinking about putting a trim piece over here just to cover some of that splintering if anybody looked inside there. But, you know, like I say, it's the inside of the cabinet. It doesn't really matter. But I just don't want this poking any wiring or anything that might dangle around or somehow get caught down in there. And it uh, shouldn't be any right there, but I just want to make sure. And I don't want anybody getting in there working on anything and cutting their hand or their arm of that because they are very sharp. And the back's the same way down there. They're sticking through. But I'm going to try to stand the cabinet up here in a second and see how it kind of rolls around. Okay guys, I got the cabinet on its casters. And uh, it's doing really well. Pretty easy to roll it around. It's on the carpet on one side as you know. It's very easy to, to move around now. You can kind of guide it with the front wheels. Slide it in place with the back. Not too hard to move on carpet. Let's see, I'll pull it all the way up on the carpet. Yeah, it's just exactly like I wanted. See, once you set it in place, just the weight of the cabinet keeps it pretty much in place. And once that monitor's in there, I mean, it's, it's really going to stay put. It's not going to move. Oh, uh, I know you're not seeing the whole cabinet. You're just seeing the bottom there. But uh, that's all I want you to see. And it, as you see, you know, once it's sitting on carpet, you know, it's really... It's really only about, let me measure, I'll actually measure it. It's only one inch off the carpet. I mean, it almost looks like it's floating, to be honest. It's one inch off the carpet because the wheels sink into the carpet probably three-fourths of an inch or so, so that thing's probably only one and a half to one and three-fourths inch off of the floor on those casters. And the casters are just about completely hidden. I want to detach the camera from the tripod here. I mean, you can't even see the casters. I've got them up under there so far that I mean, I mean, you have to really get down to see them. So it's not detracting from the design of the cabinet, the way it looks or nothing. Now, of course, you can see these up front because of the way I've got them rolled. But you know, if I pull on it, they'll rotate around the casters wheel. You see how they go back? And uh, you won't even see them when the front's on, even if they're in that position. Let me push it forward again. See, that's as far as they're ever going to stick out. But the front piece, if you take a look, the front piece is going to go straight down there. And, you know, I really didn't think about it. <laughs> but I'm glad. It looks like that's just going to miss that front panel. If you take a look, I didn't think to check for that. I almost got it too close, but it looks like it is just going to miss that front panel by no more than about it looks like about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch but it's not going to bump it and even if it looked like it would bump it as long as it wouldn't buy too much I could take uh, you know leave the front of the panel once I put the front panel on leave it alone but the back panel right there if it was bumping those wheels I could take and uh, use a dado blade or a router or something and, and cut you know a little rabbit out of the, the bottom edge of the uh, front piece that I'm going to install it looks like just by luck, you know, I forgot to check on that because it didn't have the front panel installed at the moment. Um, 
it looks like by luck it's going to be just missing it just barely but it looks great guys another hurdle don't have the monitor sitting in it right now but I'm going to put the monitor in it uh, tomorrow and see how it rolls around I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a little tougher to roll with all that weight on it but I don't care I just want it to be able to roll around and move without messing up our nice laminate we put on there uh, scraping up the floor and everything and being just you know pain in the ass to move around but I think it really worked out well just like I wanted it to thanks for watching guys